All right, good day to you. My name is Fred Oakman, and with me today, as always, is Mr. Jake Peters, and you are listening to P.S. This is Awesome PlayStation Podcast. This is episode 338. And we are a show where we share our feelings about the current state of PlayStation. Before we get on the show, I want to invite you all to subscribe to our channel on YouTube, youtube.com slash PS. This is awesome. If you want to make fun of our trophy list on the PlayStation Network, you can find me at anchorless underscore 81 and Mr. Jake Peters at jakesaw01. As always, you can write the show at PS. This is awesome at gmail.com. And most importantly, don't forget to share this show with your friends. Make sure you leave comments, rate the podcast as you see fit. We are a video podcast as well, so you can watch the show if you prefer on our YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe to that. And if you're new or if you are a longtime listener of the show, or maybe a middling listener of the show, we have a Patreon. You can support the show at a $1 level in the Patreon tier. It's called the one and only $1 Club. Head to patreon.com slash awesome to become a $1 patron and get a free die cut vinyl sticker in the mail and a shout out on the show with that out of the way jake welcome back to the show how are you doing um doing okay i i had a bit of a rough week last week so i'm mm. doing pretty good i uh so i uh fucked my car up because well I actually i didn't do shit but i um were you so you were in Meadville last Tuesday when that big storm blew through? Yeah, all that rain and like downtown flooded and all that. Yeah, by Taco Bell, it was so, really bad. Yeah, so uh, I was driving home from work when that storm hit, mm-hmm. and what the fuck? Jake's pulling uh, a worm out of his eye for those listening to the podcast. I no. I, so I was driving home when that storm hit, and I uh, I was driving. I was like, holy cow, it's really windy. I'm just like looking out my windshield as I'm driving. I'm like, wow, it's really windy. And then... I didn't really think anything of it. And then like a minute later, it just started fucking torrentially downpouring. Like some of the hardest rain I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. And so I was like, oh man. And so I slowed down because it was raining so hard. And I kid you not, like 30 seconds later, a branch the size of a baseball bat came off of a tree right through my windshield. <laughs> It literally, like, in front of my face. Like, the branch was in through the windshield, like, six inches from my face. It was a limb. It wasn't a branch, right? Yeah, I mean, it was, It was like as, like I said, it was about the size of a baseball bat. Yeah. Came through my fucking window. So, of course, I'm, like, freaking out. I, sl- I slam on the brakes, and because I, I can't see anything it, between the torrential downpour and this freaking branch that's come through my window. And uh, so I stopped... On like the, I just slowed down and like pulled over till I could feel the side of the road, and then I didn't know what to do. I couldn't see, so I like pulled the branch into the car through the windshield, threw it on the floor, and I'm like looking around. I can't see. I can't see. So I put the car in reverse, and I could see through my backup camera. Mm. So I looked and I saw there was a there was a someone's house. There was a driveway nearby. So I just backed up across the road into this person's driveway, just backed up off the road. Because I was like, I can't can't fucking drive this car. Like, I can't see. Not only is it raining, but there's literally, like, my windshield is destroyed. There's two huge holes in it. The whole thing's fucking spiderwebbed and shattered. And I'm completely covered in broken glass. My car's all covered. I've got fucking wood everywhere. And so... I backed into this driveway and all of a sudden like these cars start like stopping in the road and I'm like what the fuck here right after I went through that tree fell on the road oh wow and completely blocked the road so not only did this this branch hit my window whatever tree it came out of fell down onto the road right after I went so through you could have you could have died I could have been, dude. If that 
if that branch had been 50% bigger, twice as big, it would have had enough momentum to go through completely through the windshield and fucking impale me. Yeah. It was insane. I've never like it's one of those things it, like I was I was uh I'm glad I was right. joking like I was joking it's like that's like some real life final destination shit. Yeah. Where it's like why would like the 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 odds of something like this happening are so slim. Yeah. But it did. If you were and going so, faster, uh, maybe even it would have. Yeah, or even if I was going faster, it could have been worse. But um, thankfully, I think because of the way the branch hit, it like hit the base of the windshield, and then kind of snapped around, and then like slapped the window and busted through. Yeah. Whereas like if it had come in like a spear, yeah, it probably would have went right through the fucking window. And so uh, I pulled when I backed into that driveway, I like I like was sitting in my car and I'm looking around and I looked up and there's all these suspended power lines above me just fucking blowing in the wind. I was like, no, no way. So I put the car in reverse and like backed up farther into the driveway. I was like, I'm not going to survive this being attacked by a happen. tree just to have the fucking power lines come down on my car death. and kill me oh my god so uh i mean it actually wasn't too bad as far as like i thought it was because it was pouring so i was like i thought i was gonna mm. be sitting there soaked because water was literally pouring through my windshield right and like across my dash all over my lap and everything because it was raining so hard and I still had all of my shit in my car from when we played that show oh. on Saturday. Yeah. Thankfully, it was all in the back and nothing happened in the back. So that stuff didn't get wet. But I had I, – I needed a way to keep the water from coming in. So I have this backpack that I carry, like, my pedals and stuff in. I literally dumped everything out on my back seat and was just, like, holding this backpack up against the fucking window trying to keep the water out. Because I was getting soaked, and uh, and I just had to sit there for like an hour and wait for the wait for the tow truck, wait for the fucking cops to show up, and then like they couldn't get to me because the road was blocked from the freaking tree being down, so they had to wait for the tree to get cut up before they could get through. And, um, I'm glad you weren't hurt because if you were hurt and you were waiting like that, that would have sucked. Yeah, well, I would have right. called. I mean, I would have called an ambulance if yeah. I had been because I, I called nine one one. Because I, dude, in that situation, it's like, what? What do you fucking do? Like, I don't know. Like, I'm not. Like, I, I can tell that I'm not injured. I'm not. I mean, the branch did hit my hand because my hand was like on the top. I was ride, driving with one hand, and like took a bunch of skin and shit off my hand. But I could tell nothing. Nothing felt broken or, or like did. I didn't need stitches or anything. It was just kind of a bad scrape and. um so it's like I'm not gonna like someone could really need an ambulance. Oh yeah. So I'm not gonna fucking call an ambulance to come out when I have like a boo boo. Right. And Sarah, I called Sarah and she's all worried that I like might be in shock or something. I was like, no, I feel fine. I'm just I just don't know what to do. Yeah. Cause I'm sitting in this poor like downpour with a busted up car. I can't drive. And so I call I call 911. I was just like, look, this happened. I don't know what to do. They're like, do you need an ambulance? I'm like, no. They're like, okay, well, we'll just forward you to the state police. Call the state police. They're like, do you need an ambulance? I'm like, no. And they're like, okay, well, we'll send someone out whenever they're available. I'm like, fine. And then I called AAA because I'm a member. And dude, get this shit. So unless I fucked something up, when I called AAA, I could not talk to a person. They made me go to, they, they texted me a link to go to a website to chat with somebody to request a tow. Like, this is supposed to be like an emergency fucking roadside service. Yeah, that's true. What if I didn't have, like, what if I didn't have a smartphone? Or what if I didn't have 4G? Like, I couldn't get access to the internet. Yeah. Like, what the hell am I supposed to do? Now, maybe if I had, like, dude, I literally tried the whole, like, cram in zero and, like, the automated menus to try and get a person and all this stuff. And maybe there's, like, a way to do it. But 
I was just like, fuck it. And I got on there and I, and I did the chat thing. And then somebody called me and they were like, oh yeah, we're going to, they're coming to get you or whatever. And I'm just like, like, I, I'm really glad that I don't like, I'm not in more dire need than this, but that I found to be a little bit strange, but I did, I think tow truck eventually did come, took me back to my house first so I could get all of my music shit out of the car. And then once I got all the music shit out of the car, he took it over to the auto body shop where it is now. So it's getting worked on, getting new windshield and new wipers and what about water damage? crap like that. Well, I don't know yet. We'll have to see. But uh, yeah, so and then like, you know, to add insult to injury, I'm covered when I get home. I'm covered in broken glass. So I just took all of my clothes off outside and just threw them in the garbage because it was like all these tiny little baby shards of glass. And even after I did all that, I, I put my shoes back on to go outside and do something. And I got a shard of glass in the bottom of my foot uh, just because it was like somehow it got in my shoe it's just everywhere. So I, uh, yeah, I don't know. So that, that kind of, sucked but in all things considered it was just kind of a freak thing and i'm really glad that it wasn't worse than it was and my car wasn't really that hopefully not that damaged um because it did rain into my car for approximately a half an hour before it stopped raining or whatever water yeah um and i tried to block as much of it as i could but it's like you know, it's like pouring in over the dash, whatever. I don't know. But, um, <laughs> so we'll have to see. Um, they think it's just the windshield and the wiper arms, and they might have to recalibrate some things in the electronics on my car, but, uh, it should be good. I was just really, really, really hoping that they weren't going to total it yeah. because my car, my car's pretty old at this point, and it's got a lot of miles on it. So, much more than a scratch and the insurance company is going to want to total it. Mm. And I really, it's all paid off and everything. Like I don't want to fucking go buy a new car and have a monthly payment and all this dumb shit. And, uh, but no, it seems like they're just going to fix it, which is cool. And, uh, but other than that, um, Sarah's in California. So I've been kind of, batching it all weekend nice. just myself which has been kind of i mean i've been doing all just i've literally just been doing housework all weekend but uh it's nice occasionally to have some some time to yourself oh, it's, and it's real nice and our dog chest is fucked up so i've been dealing with that a little bit she got surgery and the she keeps she popped her stitches out twice yeah so we kept having to get it fixed and now it's like <clears throat> seems like it's closing up now but it's like you have to keep bandages on it and it's on our chest so it's a really hard place to so we got this like v you know what vet wrap is it's like an ace bandage but it's kind of tacky yeah and it's used to like wrap horses legs and stuff okay um usually it comes in different colors but i uh, it's nice because I don't, I'm sure you could use it on yourself if you wanted to. I don't know if there's anything about it that would make it um, bad to use on people, but it's nice because it's like an ace bandage, but it's lighter and it sticks to itself. So you don't need like those little Metal clips, clips and, stuff, yeah. and all that stuff. And so basically I just put the pad, like a surgical pad on her chest and then like wrap her up like in this little vest of this stuff. And it works pretty good, but she has to wear a cone when we're not around. Oh, of course. She doesn't fucking like that, but uh, she's pretty good. So other than that, I mean, I don't know. I, I've just been uh, doing my thing. <laughs> Very good. Um, how's, your, how's your first day of work? Yeah, I started my new job new today. Job. It, was, it was good, man. It was... Uh, it's weird... It's weird to be like the boss, kind of like a boss, but like it was one of those things where it was just like I had to get on a call and the, the team's meeting was just like, meet Fred, 
And my my boss was just like, hey, this is the new guy. And then handed the floor over. And I was like, oh, hey, here's my situation. Here's where I came from. Here's what I do. Nice to meet you all. But it was all because a lot of people were working from home. It wasn't like in person. So, like, I don't know what these pe- people look like. I don't know their names. I'm just, like, talking to people. And they're just like, oh. Yeah. And they're all being really nice. Everybody's really nice. You know, it's all prof- it's a professional work environment. But, like, it was interesting. It was good, man. The drive's not bad. I, I got a parking spot. Like, everything's good. Uh, for, it was day one. Um, but with this kind of stuff, with, with credentials and in, 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 uh, giving me new permissions within our computer system it sometimes it takes time to get that stuff in place so there there really wasn't a lot i could even do today so i i really just kind of like cleaned up the office they gave me a little bit and then um got got situated got my got my computer all set up with the with the internet and um yeah i was still getting like calls from people from my past job and it was real nice just to like pass that on to the other office okay this isn't my stuff anymore take it it was nice nice feeling it was good man i um i did play altoona pennsylvania on saturday i played friday at the hotel bar and we need to do something about the monitor man that that little monitor i have is not representative of what the guitars it's like real weird sounding so I have been playing a lot with confidence with the speakers in front of me and using that little monitor. So I I played Altoona. They, they had this thing at this... Uh, Altoona's a far away from where... Pennsylvania's a really big state. So I agreed to do this gig for a price. And it was a late... I, I, I wasn't supposed to start until 8 at night. Play 8 to 11 p.m. Three hours acoustic outdoors in Altoona, Pennsylvania, which is three hours from home. So round trip, that's six hours. So luckily, my aunt lives in Curransville, Pennsylvania. So Curransville is an hour in between Meadville and Altoona. So I could shave an hour off the drive home if I could just get there and crash at her place. Totally worked out. But the show was good. It was cool because there was there's a dude... Uh, who always buys our stuff online, like the flood stuff, my solo stuff, one of my land stuff. And uh, he lives out in Belfont, which is a hike, mm. which is out by State College. And uh, he never gets to see me play with any of my iterations. But because I was in Altoona, he actually made the trip out. And I got to hang out with him for a little bit. And uh, I didn't even know he was going to be there. It was cool. I was like, oh, so you're that guy. Because, you know, when you're not a big band, you know the names that buy your shit. Um, you know, we, we, it's not like we sell like two things. We sell a lot of things, but like this dude is on Johnny on the spot. Like whenever we release something, usually he's really supportive and it's great and it's, and it's awesome. So I got to hang out with him for a little bit and he said he actually got a hotel in Altoona, um, got permission from the wife to come out and see me play. And that always feels good. You know, when someone's coming out to see you do what you do and they're going to throw some money for a hotel room to, to it, I, I'm kind of thinking mm. like I should just get out more because people do appreciate it. But it was a good evening. Um, the drive back, for those who don't know, uh, that whole area I'm talking about, Altoona, Kernsville, Tyrone, uh, Clearfield, all sit in the craziest mountain range. Like, there's, it's just all mountains. So there's a lot of hunting camps. There's a lot of, like, really interesting. Geographically, it's beautiful. But at the same time... When you're me and you're trying to find your aunt in Curransville and you just punch in the address and the GPS, not realizing it's going to take you through the mountains as the crow flies, and it's two in the morning and there's zero light pollution because there's nobody out fucking there. And you're taking, like, I would drive, I started off and I was like, oh, this is going to be an hour to get there. You know, I'm like, all right, perfect. I'm right on, right on time. I stopped at Sheets, got myself a pretzel, got myself, uh, uh, a burrito, a veggie burrito, because I hadn't eaten all day, and um, I'm full belly. I got I got water in the car. I set out on my voyage to go to my aunt's house. I haven't been there in forever, and uh, I start off, and it's like take a right on Denny's Road. And I'm like, what? So I get on Denny's Road, and it's almost like a roller coaster. It's like straight fucking down, 
Like you're just going. I didn't even realize I was on a mountain, but I was going straight down. It's all covered by woods. There's hunting camp signs. There's no there's no electricity anywhere. And it's like, stay on Denny's Road for nine miles. And I'm like, okay. And I, I go in. And I'm like, about two miles in. And it just starts weaving like this. And going down and up and down. And there's no guardrails. And it's like 25 mile an hour turns. And I'm like, this is fucking creepy. Like, if so, like someone could murder me out here. Like, it was like back fucking woods, Pennsylvania. Like, I'm like, all right. Well, that's fine. I get to the end of Denny's Road. It says, take a left on like, uh, you know, it would say like, interstate blah 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 and i'm like all right cool i'm out of it and then like a mile in it'd be like turn right on black snake road and i'm like fuck and i I go same fucking thing just and beautiful but in the in the pitch black of like two in the morning complete silence i'm tired from playing a show um i'm not drunk or anything i did have a drink at the show but i wasn't intoxicated but I'm just tired. I just feel that fatigue. You know what I mean? When you're out and you play three hours and you have one drink in you and you just ate and all you can do is think about going to bed. And I'm going and like I get at the end of Black Snake Road and it's like turn left on a blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, all right, sweet. I'm fucking out. And I'm going like really slow on these roads and I'm looking at the time. I'm like, man, like this is nuts. And then it's like turn right on the, like, I don't even know, like Charlotte, Charlotte road. And then you go right. And then you're back on the same fucking, it's all these winding roads. Like if I didn't know better, I was in darkest dungeon two on that fucking caravan, just careening with like a torch hanging and just going through this. Like, I don't know why the GPS took me that way. There were no guardrails. I saw about 300 deer and like, it was, it was, like part of me was like this would be amazing on a motorcycle not at night because it'd be scary as fuck but like i was waiting for sasquatch something to come out dude it was it was absolutely ridiculous and i finally i got i got where i thought i was getting close to my aunt's house and i was and there's just this fucking cemetery out of nowhere and it's like turn left onto Perry's Road, and I'm just like, what the? Where the fuck am I? And then it looked like it was taking me into the cemetery. And I'm like, what? Would like I'm like now I'm in a horror movie. I'm like some some AI is fucking with me, and they're taking me to like some sort of grave. And then I just went a little bit further and took the left, and then I kind of started seeing some civilization, some houses and shit. But it was an hour. It was literally an hour of not a single residential area and just backwoods. And I was just like, I don't think I'm going to pop out where I should. And I'm just waiting for service to ki- to die. And then I'm just fucked, you know, but it didn't, I had good service the whole way. It was awesome. It was, it was an experience, but I just, uh, I felt like I was in the Blue Ridge mountains or something. Like it, I've never been in mountains like that in Pennsylvania. It was insane. Like, like, and then the roads, like, you know, all you have are the headlights from the car. And these roads are like as well kept as they can be, but the roads are just all kicked up and like there's gravel and loose stones everywhere. And then you'll see like, because of the rain you were talking about, like they got a ton of rain and like you can tell where the mountain is because you can see water coming across. Like it's not like crazy, like it's not like gonna sweep your car. It's just you can see that there's running water. You're in a natural watershed and you see where it's going. Cause you're in the fucking mountains just coming across the asphalt or the roads and like in those areas where the erosion happens like you know there is just like gravel and you see it's just like where the fuck am i like this is nuts and i just kept imagining like what would happen if i'm like five miles in on black snake road with no civilization and there's just a serial killer like posted up on the wall like with his truck across the road and he's just like going to fucking execute me. There's nothing I could have done. Like, I'd, I'd have been toast. Like, there was no moonlight. And I think there was actually supposed to be, like, a meteor shower that night, too. And I think I saw a couple shooting stars, which was nice because there was no light pollution. I they, they just shot right out whenever the tree canopy would break, you know, every once in a while. But it was nuts, man. Uh, it was a good show, though. I made I made a lot of money over the weekend doing concerts. It was great. So I needed it. It was fun. You probably could have got a hotel room in Altoona for like $58. Yeah. And you could have just stayed there. I didn't know what I was up against is the problem. I didn't realize it was. And then my my aunt, who's, you know, my mom, she's older. 
like stayed up for me and she didn't have to, you know, I think my mom had texted her and said, Hey, you know, they call me Freddie, Freddie, Freddie's out there. He's going to, and she's like, oh, I'll stay up and wait for him. You know, I showed up at like two thirty in the morning, four, three in the morning. And then I'm just like, you have no idea where I've just come from. And she just started laughing. She's like, did you use the GPS? I was like, yeah. She goes, yep. Yeah. She goes, those roads aren't fun. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, yeah, they're pretty fucking rough. But it's pretty well. She's like, oh, I figured you would have called if you had any problems. And I'm like, yeah, I would have. But anyways, we're not here to talk about all that bullshit. Um, I wonder, yeah, with my new job, I'm no longer in the golf league. My dad had to play with a sub today. There's there's two more, two more outings. Uh, and then there's like the, the playoff, like the final, the final game. Um, and I think it falls on a holiday. So I might be able to do that if they're going to have it on that day. But anyways, well, I was just had a, had a thought that, yeah, I'm not in the golf league anymore because of my new work schedule and, I'm not working in Meadville anymore, but I, uh, I wonder how he did. I'll have to, I'll have to ask him. Hopefully he did good, but we're going to talk about video games and, uh, sorry. Real, first, I should say that we didn't do an episode last week and Jake, it's funny. You and I had zero communication. It was just a given that it I, wasn't fucking You know what's happening. funny is I was, go- I was literally going to text you. And on my way home, I got fucking hit by that tree, and it just completely vacated my mind at that point. And I was gonna write so you. So I was just, but whatever. Yeah, no, it's fine. I was gonna write you, and I was just like, Pro- I don't really want to rush this. You know, it was bad timing for me, anyways. And I was like, I'll just put. So, I, so for anyone who's not part of our patron Patreon. I did make a post on Patreon. I didn't make a YouTube post this time around, but on, on Patreon, I made it available to everybody. So even if you're not a paid subscriber to our Patreon, you can go there and still get content um, of ours and access stuff. Uh, from here moving forward, if we ever have a delay in an episode, instead of going on YouTube, instead of going on where the... I'm only posting it on our Patreon because it is way too like much for me to have to make sure I've you know for as small as a listener base as we have if you want to know the deets and what's going on with our show go to the patreon website and uh if you really want to support it throw us a dollar a month but i'm not going to be because i used to do youtube quick videos whenever we couldn't do a show and it doesn't happen often but clearly jake you had your own thing going on and then i was just inundated with so much my ac still not fixed just an fyi it's not it's not fixed uh, we're going on like a month and a half. I called. It's not breezy air. I called it breezy air on previous. It's speedy air. I called them and I said, "Can you tell me what? Did you guys find the right size evaporator coils or not?" And then she was like, "Oh yeah, let me let me. Let, oh yeah, it's just. A, it's, she goes, I just have to make a quick call and then you'll get an email to confirm the non-covered prices." And I'm like, "She goes, you don't want the upgrade then?" And I said, "No, I don't want the upgrade." <laughs> For the fifteenth fucking time, I don't want the goddamn upgrade. Excuse my language. I want you to come fix or replace my AC. That's all I've ever wanted. Um, and they were saying they couldn't find the right size evaporator coils for my furnace. They tried to. You missed this on the last episode, but they tried to uh, get me to to buy up and get a brand new furnace. And I was like, but the warranty is not covering that furnace at all because it's not damaged. And she's like. Yeah, that is true. She goes, but it would just be easier because we can't, you know, those coil sizes are hard to find for, and I'm like, easier for you. And I was like, unless it's getting picked up by the warranty company, I'm not going to just give you money to fix my fucking furnace. It's working fine. And she's like, well, we could probably do another another service call and come out and find something. It's older. I'm sure we could. I'm like, oh, so I'm thinking like, oh, now you want me to commit insurance fraud. No, just fix my AC. It's all I want. I'm gonna. I'm in this fight till the end. I'm getting it done. Um, so, anyways, I talked with them today, and they were. Uh, they said you'll get an email, you prove it, and then we'll be out to fix it, to replace it. And I think all this whole holdup was them just trying to get me to pay them more money to do shit that didn't need to happen, which is bullshit. So, anyways, it does look like I'm in about eighteen or nineteen hundred bucks, though altogether non covered shit, but. Why is that not covered? Uh, for the fucking, um, they got a 
apparently do there's non-covered shit so it covers the cost of the unit itself and it covers the fucking coils but it doesn't cover them tearing apart the furnace to reinstall the coils remove the old ones to do new drip lines to do the fucking concrete for because the concrete's all little caddy wampus and they said like they ha- it has to be level just some bullshit like they're charging me shit and and i looked at the warranty and it and it does specifically say it doesn't cover everything it just covers certain things but to get a new get all that shit done anywhere else you're looking at like probably four thousand dollars so i'm saving like two grand but it's still a pain in the fucking ass for as long as they made me fucking wait they should be just fucking doing it for nothing you know what i mean that's my opinion. I mean, they do it that. I mean that that's how they make money on you, Fred. Well, of course, but they but I <laughs> I pay. I actually they they also get paid by the warranty company. This company. Well, know? I understand, but they usually those warranty companies and stuff. Yeah. They do it because it's good work. Like they, it's like it's like guaranteed business for them. But I think their margins are probably pretty low compared to when they get work on their own. That's why they're trying to yeah. get you to do like the the upgrades. And they all don't that get stuff as much because, when they get through the warranty, right? Right. Yeah. But yeah. But it was non- I mean, as long as you get your shit fixed, I guess it's fine. I I uh, yeah. It's not I, worth it. I could not have. I could not have tolerated going that long without AC. Now, thankfully, this past weekend, it was pretty cool. So Mm -hmm. there wasn't, you know, it wasn't super, super freaking hot out like it's been. But, uh, yeah, man, my shit is on full blast all the time. It's never hot in my house. (laughs) That's the way I like it, no matter what it costs. Yeah. Yeah, I hear that. Um, Well, let's talk about games we're playing. Every episode, we talk about games we're playing. We're already a half hour into the show, and uh, the I just wanted to bring everybody up to speed. I did get out the racing wheel and tried it with uh, Gran Turismo Seven. It's a really good time. It's uh, it's rad. Um, I was much better with it, ironically, when it was uh, just in automatic mode, and you know, I didn't have to shift just to get used to the brake and the you know the sensitivity of it because it's stiff. The brake's stiff. You really got to come down on it, and uh, just figuring that out. But it is awesome with the force feedback with the wheel and then like when you hit like a wall and like the the headset like vibrates and the wheels like jerking. It's like it's like you're fucking like really it's it's really um it's really immersive. It's really cool. So I've been enjoying that. I, I've only done it a couple times. Um but I'm I'm back to the shifter and it's it's working good. And then I picked up the Queen music pack for uh uh, Beat Saber, and that's fun. That's a blast. Uh, I had those songs in my head for a while, and then I finally beat the second boss in Darkest Dungeon Two. Um, so they they have these different modes. Uh, they're called uh, confessions, and there's five five or four confessions, and each confession has its own boss. So I've gone through the second confession now, and I'm on the third one. They let you do it that way so i don't know if you have to beat them all in one run or not i'm gonna fi- i'll figure it out you probably do i think you probably do but i don't i don't know i think that i don't know because reddit talks about like oh if you're going for the grand slam you know this is how you should do it but like i think you might actually just be able to beat the game once you get to the final boss and beat it i don't know though because you only get the next concession or confession open to you after you beat the current one you're on so the first confession's first, second one second, and then the third one. And with each confession, there opens up more, uh, more variety in the game, as far as different enemies, different locations. It's kind of cool. So I'm loving this game. It's so good. But what about you, Jake? What are you playing? Uh, well, actually, I've been playing a bunch of different shit. I mean, partially because it's been a couple weeks, but also because uh, actually it's been three weeks for me because you had LJ on um, whatever that was two weeks ago three weeks ago whatever it was and so uh, I haven't been on in a while and um, 
I did play, so I actually got my VR out, and I played a little bit, I think this was Friday night, I played a little bit of Gran Turismo and a little bit of Beat Saber. Okay. Um, I guess kind of in line with what you were doing. <laughs> That's so weird. I didn't I didn't play, um, I, 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 like total between the two games, maybe a couple hours. I played like four or five races in Gran Turismo, and then I played Beat Saber for like an hour or something like that and um it's fun it's really cool i was thinking about i was thinking about maybe jumping into something else but then i was just like eh, i feel like kind of jumping off and uh i so i i'm still playing dragon's dogma 2 i'm like 35 hours into it or something and i'm just kind of like i still like like it but I've been kind of playing other stuff too. So it's not like it's it's not completely absorbing my attention anymore because I'm not just I'm just not that tied to it. Mhm. But um I started playing uh that game Bat Boy that I talked about in the past yeah. where it's like a it's like a platformer and where you're like a all of the it's kind of like a Mega Man style game where like all of the characters have a sports theme and the main character is bat boy he's like got a baseball bat and mm-hmm. he like runs around and hits things that's like his his shtick and a lot of the enemies have like some baseball themes to them like they'll throw baseballs at you and you can hit them back at them and stuff like that um this game is really good and it is really hard so i'm i think i got to like world eight and the i have a lot of fun with the platforming and the um like the level design and everything like that but i get to like a lot of times i'll get to the final boss for the level and i'm just like i get over it real fast yeah when i like can't beat them because what the one thing about these these bosses in this game that i don't like is that the idea is that all of the bosses are your friends that have been corrupted by the power of this bad guy. Okay. And so every single boss, the way that it starts out, it's one of your friends, and you fight them. It, they're all two stages. You fight them, and they have this move set, and then you you take away all their health, you beat them, and then they power up with like this superpower. And then they're faster and harder and you have to fight and you have to beat them a second time. They're all like that. At least all the ones that I've played so far. And I've, I've played, I think maybe five or six of them. Mm. And uh, cause a couple of the levels have like intermediate kind of other things going. Uh, and I just want the game. Like I get that, that that's not sort of, that's not the MO. That's not the DNA of these types of games, but I wish there was a way for it to like, I didn't have to play that first fucking section of the boss over and over again. Because it's like, you learn that section, and then you get through it, and then you get killed on the second section. And then you learn the, and then you're like struggling to get through the first section, and then you get killed on the second section. And then you get like better and better and better until finally you're like, okay, I can beat the first section every time, but I keep getting killed on the second section, but I keep having to play the first fucking section every single time all over again. And. There might be something that I'm missing, but for whatever reason, I still don't have a health upgrade. So I'm like eight levels in, and I'm like on the same. I, like you take three hits and you die. Yeah, three hits. So and it's really, it's really tough. But that said, if you're into like these old school style platformers, like it's really good. So I highly recommend if you're into Shovel Knight, if you're into um, Cyber Shadow, and like all these other kind of games like that. I think that you would really be into this game, Bat Boy. Um, on top of that, I started a new character in Diablo 2, Resurrected. Because for whatever reason, I was just like, man, I kind of feel like playing this. So I And I still had it installed on my PlayStation. So I booted it up, started a Sorceress, and I've just been kind of playing it here and there. I'm like right at the end of the first act. I'm not like going super hardcore with it. It's just kind of... It's just kind of fun to like mindlessly play from time to time. Yeah. 
And then finally, the last game, what I've been playing the last couple days, is for whatever reason, I decided to jump into that game, The First Descendant. Oh, yeah. I know you said you played a little bit of it. Yeah. Dude, this game is a shameless ripoff of Destiny. Yeah. Every single piece of it, all of like the art, how the levels are, like how like the level structure is, all of the, even like what it looks like when you go talk to a character where like the panel comes up beside them and it like has some text and like, like the, even like the, 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 the pistols are called fucking hand cannons and like, like literally instead of having a ghost, you have like this, the guide that is like telling you what to go, what to do to go to from A to B. Yeah. Like it is even like the the icons on the fucking map for all the missions. It is a shameless rip off of Destiny. Now I will say, it's third person, which is a new different a new flavor. The fact that it's it's actually not like a custom character. It's like it's almost like a hero shooter kind of thing where you unlock these different heroes that have different abilities and stuff and play as them. Um, and, uh, it's quite a bit more sexualized than destiny. I mean, they're like, like there's like their version of the tower or whatever, when you first boot up the game and you kind of like spawn into this thing. Yeah. And like, after I started the game, the first time I spawned into it, it was like, I was surrounded by other people's characters and it was like all these females and like bikinis and fucking like scantily clad shit. And it's just like, oh, okay. I, I get what you're trying to do here. But I, uh, I mean, it's literally like a Walmart brand third person destiny, but I will say there is something that feels really chunky and satisfying about the guns in that game. I, I don't know if it's just that like they use heavy vibration in the controller or if it's like the sound. Yeah. It doesn't control as well as Destiny by any means. But the way that it feels when you just like are just shooting an enemy, it just it's pretty cool. So I don't know. I mean, I don't give a shit about anything that's going on. Like the story is just kind of like whatever. Mm. The voice acting's pretty fucking bad. The writing's terrible. And, but I will say the imagery is fucking awesome. The imagery of the game is really cool. Um, so I don't know that I'm really going to keep playing with it. I was just really interested in kind of what it was. And um, it's been just kind of keeping me busy for the last couple of days. But yeah, that's. I think that's it. Yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all I've been playing. I get it. That's it. It's like so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Let me let me look here. What we had next? We had uh, news. We talk about the news every episode of the podcast, and uh, this one is something I forgot that even happened. That I I really I really want to try. But let's not forget about the amazing game that Alan Wake Two was, um, mm -hmm. especially coming up into the fall time. They uh, remedy uh, the the developer has announced that they haven't made any profit yet off of Alan Wake 2, which is crazy and mind-boggling to me, but not really because the game's so polished and it's so good. It's just, I think they're going to. Uh, it just hasn't happened yet. So they're looking at the, the trends, and they're going to turn a profit, but it just hasn't happened yet. But with that being said, there was DLC for this game called Night Springs that was like mm. kind of like... It wasn't really lauded. Like it wasn't really like talked about much. It just kind of happened and disappeared. I think it happened during the Helldiver two uh, push or something. But I want to get into this and see what this is all about. Um, bummer for Remedy because this is. It goes to show it doesn't matter how fucking good of a game you make. Sometimes you just don't turn the kind of profit that you deserve. But at the same time. Good on them for doing the DLC for it. And uh, they are going to get money on this for sure. There's no doubt in my mind. It's just a matter of time. But what what do you think about this, Jake? Are you interested in Night Springs? I mean, so, yeah, I'm definitely interested in Night Springs. I think it, it looks cool, and I would like to get to it at some point. That might be like my, um, might be like my Halloween game uh, this year, which would be kind of cool. Yeah. Um, 
because I have like no interest in like the reboot of a remake of Until Dawn or whatever uh, it is, and I I don't know like Silent Hill seems like it could be cool, and like I think Slitterhead might be coming out too, which might be interesting, but. I wouldn't mind diving back into Alan Wake and just playing this DLC just because I, I love like the Rod Sterling fucking uh, um, why the fuck am I blanking uh, Twilight Zone. Oh, like, yeah. Just wrapping around this whole thing. And uh, what's surprising to me is the fact that they have not made any money on it so far tells me that they must have spent a good chunk of money making this game. Oh, for sure. It's which long. is which is in contrast to like they didn't spend almost any money making control. And uh, uh is this game way higher production value than control? I don't know. I've never played control. But from a distance, control looks pretty good from a production standpoint. I know a lot of people didn't, some people didn't jive with like the gameplay of it and everything. Like I know that you weren't super crazy about it, but, um, the only problem I had with control was the story. What didn't you like about the story? I mean, is it just like without, couldn't fucking say follow it without it. getting spoilers? Yeah, I just couldn't fucking uh, follow it. I think a lot of it, I think a problem, a lot, that's one of the reasons why I kind of haven't played it. Um, because I heard that you have to read a lot of uh, like notes and pickups and stuff like that to really understand what's going on. And I really don't like that. Like, I don't want to have to sit there and fucking read in a game yeah. to understand what's going on. Yeah. Um, so. It looks like according to I just googled real quick how many copies did Alan Wake 2 sell and this gamedeveloper.com says that as of February 1st, 2024, it sold 1.3 million copies, which is not very many. Uh but it's I'm sure it's sold more than that at this point, especially with the release of Night Springs or whatever. But you have to imagine, like, if the game sold for $60 a pop, that's whatever that is. That's, what is that, 80 I don't think it was, think was, was like it $80 million? Was it, was it 50 It was 60 Okay. Because it, it should have been 70 but they said, oh, we're going to sell it for $10 less because we're not doing a physical edition. Right. So, you know, they only made in revenue maybe 80 or $90 million on it. And... They could have easily spent that money making this game. Yeah. So, because it's it's like you said, it's very high production value, and it's a long game too. It's a it's a very long game. It's and arguably way longer than it needs to be, in my opinion. You say that about uh, every game, which, though. Well, dude, I mean, I don't disagree does, with you. Does fucking Alan Wake Two really need to be thirty hours long for the campaign? No. Like, I don't know that it does. Maybe it can be 20 hours long, and it would still be amazing. Well, so, it's still an amazing game regardless. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not disputing that. I'm just saying that, like, that would have shaved a lot of cost out of it if they, if they didn't make it so long. But you have a vision. You have a vision. I get it. Um, so this is a bummer for them. I hope it doesn't affect their development of games in the future. But Because like, they, they set up the end of Alan Wake 2 to almost necessitate an Alan Wake 3, which is interesting. Yeah. So, I don't know. We'll have to see, I suppose. I suppose we will. All right, next one. There was a game back in the day called Wild that was going to be made. And uh, Push Square reports that... Uh, it was shown off at Gamescom a while back, but it's now shelved and nobody's working on it. Do you remember this game? Yeah, it was like uh it was announced for like early on for PS4. And uh mm -hmm. it was like you're like in the wild doing <laughs> like wild shit. I mean, 
where you're just like running around. It was like a it was like a survival, um, not like a survival game. It was like a don't starve kind of thing. But I think didn't you like get to take on uh, the the identity of like different wild animals or something? Wasn't that yeah part of it? yeah? I think it's like you're playing as some sort of like uh, tribal kind of person, and you have the ability to like either transform into or control like different animals and stuff so um and it's just you're going around this open world just being an animal i guess i don't know if it's maybe a little bit like tokyo jungle in that regard or whatever but uh yeah it um i remember it looking interesting it didn't look like something i'd maybe be that interested in playing but Mm -hmm. it looked like an interesting concept so yeah it's just weird that it got shelved i forgot all about it and i guess i I wasn't it's been interested, how many fucking years i wasn't interested enough in it to keep wondering about it you know what i mean so i guess there's probably a good reason why it got shelved anyways we move on, on playstation so i'm on the playstation europe youtube channel mm-hmm. right now and a gameplay walkthrough of this so this would have been post announcement a gameplay walkthrough was posted in 2015 so it's been almost nine years since yeah. this game was announced. I think it's probably been because Gamescom's happened this summer, or is happening. I don't know if it's happened yet or not. Yeah. But uh, nine years. So if, you can kind of almost assume that this thing is dead. The way this came but. about was somebody was on X or something, and they, they, they were just like, what's going on with Wild? And then someone was just like, yeah, we're not working on it anymore. Was like the response. So, huh? Just weird. Games like that just kind of disappear once in a while. Well, uh, speaking of disappearing, this game did not disappear. The, for it was. It's been on. You know, it, it's 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 been talked about for quite a while, but Bioware is uh, moving on with this, and and we've seen some shit from this game now, and it's Dragon Age. Um, Dragon Age Veil Garden. They changed the name. It was going to be something else, and I don't remember what it was going to be called. But it was it was like a Wolf something, I think. Um, wolf Mother or something. I don't know what it was going to be called. But Wolf Bane or something like yeah, that. Something yeah. Weird. But it. Uh, they said that unlike Dragon Age Two, um, Veil Guard is going to prohibit you from controlling different characters. And they said that mm. the reason is, is there's a lot more action per minute in the new game, and, and it's just more technically demanding on the gamer to be to have to like switch between characters and shit. So, like it or not, that's their direction. So I think that's fine. I almost prefer it this way. I hate having yeah. to play other characters, like multiple characters and battles and stuff, especially if it's not turn-based combat. Charlie, come here. Sorry, I got Charlie's down here with me. Do you have an opinion? Yeah, on I'm this? just kind of. I, I mean, I think it's fine. I personally like a lot of these kinds of games. I opt out of controlling the side characters anyway. Yeah. So I am okay with this. I think. Um, I'm watching some gameplay footage of it now, and it looks interesting i i guess i never actually watched the gameplay trailer for this game but the combat looks all right in here i I can imagine there being a universe where i would find this game really fun to play just looking at the combat and everything yeah but um i don't know i i don't particularly love the art style in this game um but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be bad. I, I can overlook that if it's uh, really fun. So um, we'll just have to see. But if I, I just know for – dude, if, if Bioware doesn't deliver on this game, there's got to be some <laughs> serious shit going down. I got a fe- uh, Dude, I've got a feeling it's going to be fucking red. Yeah, it, it very well might be. Um, and like I said, the combat looks really cool. I, I don't really, you know, it's just, it's just the art style that just doesn't appeal to me. Mm. It's a little too bright and a little too like, a little too like, uh, 
I don't know. Is it it's, a little too like, fantasy for you? It's not grim enough? It's just car- like it's cartoony, but not in an appealing way. Like a lot of the characters are like stumpy and weird looking and like Stumpy. Um it, it's almost like uh it's almost like they like mashed up fucking Immortals of Avium and Fortnite or something. I, I don't I don't know. Like it's it's pretty pretty strange that's but um funny. that doesn't mean it's gonna be bad it doesn't mean it's gonna be bad yeah that's for all a- i know it's gonna be the game of the year it's a really interesting take on the art style i thought the art style looks nice on this game i think it was it looks it's like a too- dragon age game that's just the, the style i don't remember dragon age inquisition looking this uh um it's a little on the nose looking describe it it's a little like too flat all right. Like a lot of the colors are very like flat, almost like cartoony kind of colors. Yeah. And um but that said, that's really not going to impact my opinion on the game if I start playing it and I really enjoy it. So hey, we shall see if the actions per minute or whatever the fuck they said is uh Action, sufficient actions per minute to keep me uh happy. Engaged. Yeah. Yeah. Like we're trying to keep our listeners engaged right now. I wonder what our actions right. per minute are, Jake. Zero. <laughs> <Point> five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. Um, all right, moving on. Twisted Metal, the TV series, is approved. We knew that for season two. They have begun filming season two already. I didn't watch the first one, and... I heard it was good, pretty good. Yeah, I heard it was, uh, you know, it's not The Last of Us, but it's, I heard that it's, like, pretty fun and, like, mm-hmm. not too bad and, like, a, a worth watching, which is cool considering it's, like, Dude. I don't think anyone had any expectations for this. Right. So... I'm glad to see that it is uh, done well enough for Sony to warrant a second season. Oh, yeah. I mean, I the more I hear about this, like, the more I kind of like him, like, I think I I know that the humor was very kind of like, from what I understand, I don't want to say immature, but it was just like kind of like, I don't know. You know, like when you're in, you're in like junior high and like, the kids think something's funny and you're an adult now and you're just like, that's not fucking funny. No, I'm not talking like yeah. fart jokes. I'm just saying like stupid, like dumb humor. I feel like this, this from what my, I, I started watching the first season and uh, the, I got, I only, <laughs> I only watched the first half of the, of the first episode. Um, but there was a lot of that, but it, it was, it wasn't bad. It was just one of those things where it was like, I just don't know that the humor here is speaking to me. If they're they're leaning on the humor for like, I don't know, man. Just for, for like the appeal. And it's a weird series to be pushing forward when, as far as we know, there's no fucking new game in the works. Yeah. So I want to know, is there going to be a Twisted Metal game? Like now this has I been... Think they're- you know, I think rumors were that there was, but it got shit, canceled. Sorry, mm. So it could be that they anticipated having a game to release and maybe they still will release one. But yeah, I, I don't know. We'll just have to find out. I would imagine they would want to capitalize on it. I mean, but, they've done su- they have done such a good job with all their other properties. It, it is surprising to me that they that they haven't capitalized on this. So maybe they are still. So that's my prediction for the day. We're gonna get some twisted metal shit soon. Um, moving forward, uh, this is an unfortunate turn of events. It's unfortunate, but it's it's predictable. Ready at dawn. We're uh, we're closed. Are getting closed by Meta. They were bought out 
by Facebook. And uh, they were the studio that was behind the, uh, oh, man, that game that everyone wanted is maybe a sequel to. That like kind the of order eighteen eighty six. Yeah, yeah. It kind of flopped, but like it was also really interesting. It's great, great fucking concept. So that's did studio. you play it? Yeah, yeah, I played it. It was good. So I, I enjoyed it. I do understand everyone's beef with it. A yeah. lot of it boils down to how short it was, but um. I definitely think it deserved, especially with the way that it ended. I definitely think it deserved a a sequel. I'm disappointed it uh, hasn't gotten one. And if not by Ready at Dawn, then you know they probably own the IP. Who owns the IP is the question. Sony, Sony should own it. How dope Sony would it be, dude? Game, so. If like there's like a Sony uh, state of play or some shit, and it's like a carriage, and it's like those dudes from the order and they're just sitting there and like dude you gotta admit like the hype would be real because it's like well fuck they're probably gonna really knock this out now like i would love a new order game yeah i think that uh (laughs) i think it would be cool i mean the visuals were freaking next level dude super rad yeah, so um, I'm I'm all about I'm all about them making another one and being able to pl- get go back into that world and like because you were like fighting it's like steampunk, freaking werewolves and shit colonial like, I don't know what it was it was awesome werewolf yeah it was super super rad so um, I guess we'll just have to hope and pray for the future I mean it's probably dead but hopefully not yeah. Well, Tom will tell me. I, I, I mean, if, any, if they're going to convert any property and not support it with a game, that would be the fucking property I would make into a fucking TV show. That'd be fucking rad. With that aesthetic and, like, werewolf hunters and, like, dude, they could, like, expand on that story with the, the continuation of it with a TV series. That'd be so cool. That would hmm. be where I would fucking go if I were Sony's. I'd do a fucking The Order and I'd release it, like, in the, in the fall time. You know, Halloween season, that'd be so fucking good. Yeah, that might actually be pretty pretty neat live action little TV show. Yeah. I don't know why they haven't done that. That's actually one of the best ideas I've had. All right. Anyways. Best idea you've ever had in your whole life. It's very possible. <laughs> it's not saying a lot about me, is it? Uh, the next news point, PSVR 2, the adapter is either out now or it's releasing this week. I'm not sure. Um, But it will now allow PSVR 2 units to be connected to a PC. And apparently, Sony claims to have recognized the importance of a PC connection when they were working on the hardware for this unit. So they've now since come out and been like, yeah, well, the reason we can do this right now is because when we were making it, we kind of already kind of planned that we were going to be able to do this. Like... It's like a fucking humble brag in a weird way, like a weird flex. It's just like, if that's the case, why don't you just fucking tell people when you sold when you're having trouble selling the unit that it was going to be PC compatible down the road? You know what I mean? Like, because they were hoping maybe it would push PS5s a little bit too. Yeah, that's kind of get push people over the edge. But I, I mean, yeah, I agree with you. They should have just come out and been like, "Hey, we're going to have a, a little adapter thing later." But mm-hmm. yeah, I. I probably need to buy one of these things just to try it. Um, but I, I, I gotta be honest. Like it kind of irritates me that they couldn't just put a fucking Bluetooth receiver in this dongle. Like the fact that I have to go now, I also have to buy a Bluetooth dongle so that I can attach the sense controllers to my play, my PC. I think and they, I have to they... buy this. Don't they want you to just have a Bluetooth set up in your PC? Like, don't most computers have Bluetooth built into them? Um, A lot of them do, but a lot of, like, custom PCs, unless you buy a motherboard specifically with Bluetooth enabled, they don't have Bluetooth. A lot of them don't have Bluetooth in, in by default. 
But like if you buy a computer off the shelf, like a laptop or, you know, a pre-built computer, it's most likely got Bluetooth in it. Okay. But a lot, I think a lot of gaming computers don't have them. Well, at least mine doesn't. So I definitely would have to buy. Now, just out of curiosity, this goes Amazon. <laughs> Bluetooth. That's what I get for asking questions. <laughs> Got to look Bluetooth it up. Bluetooth PC adapter. $20. So it's not like it's that big of a deal. But at the same time, it's like, fuck, man. If it's if it's this cheap, oh, here's one for 12 bucks. It's like, if it's really this cheap, why didn't you just put it in the freaking thing? Then it would all work as soon as you plugged it in. You wouldn't have to have this, like, extra step of setting up your controllers with your PC and all that. Well, you just make it all kind of work together. They're already catching enough shit from, like, consumers saying that they're nickeling and diming them for the adapter. Like, it should be free. So... I mean, it's just... I don't know about that. I don't think it should be free. I But I definitely think that if it's going to cost me $60, it should include Bluetooth. <laughs> yeah, then it cuts into their, their margins. So I don't know the answer. But, yeah, I mean, I don't yeah. disagree with you. I'm not trying to defend Sony here. I just think that, like, they should have thought it through maybe a little more then. I was under the impression that most of these PCs already had Bluetooth. But to your point, like if they're building these PCs from scratch to be VR machines, you know, then so be it. And I think even a lot of like gaming motherboards have Bluetooth are Bluetooth enabled, but I, I don't think that they all are. So yeah. there is going to be a, I think there's going to be not a small number of people that end up having to buy another piece of hardware just to connect their controllers, which is unfortunate. So now you have to buy two things. Yeah, but like I said, I mean, to be fair, I could buy a Bluetooth receiver for freaking $12 on Amazon. So it's not like it's a huge deal. It's just an annoyance. And you would think that, like, with as much trouble as Sony's had with this, that they would want to make it as smooth as possible for you to, to get this thing up and running on your PC, to get, like, as much goodwill as possible out of it. But... It just feels a little bit like they're pooping it out. Well, I wish... That's just me, though. I don't know. I just... I kind of wish that, like... I had a PC. We were talking about this before the show started. Like, I had one that would run this. I mean... Let me ask you this question, too. What... I, I'm not dialed into this at all. I'm not presuming that you are, either. Is there such a thing as VR porn on Steam? Yeah. On Steam? I don't know. I'm, I, I'm sure you could probably get one of those porn games. Because I think there are, like, VR porn games. But if you want to talk about just, like, VR video porn, yeah, that definitely exists for sure. But if this but only, I don't know about... This only works with Steam, games. though, specifically. So people can't buy this as, like, a, a jerk-off headset. Well, let's find out. Are there VR porn games on Steam? Good adult games, Steam VR. <laughs> on Reddit. Oh my gosh. So there is a I mean, I'm not going to I'm not going to fucking read through this. Um Yeah, apparently there there are some um to be clear, I, I, I Googled this in a incognito window because I didn't want to fucking have this be popping up all the time whenever I'm going to search for things. That's so but, funny. uh, yeah, so apparently, um, you could, you could do it. Use it as a, a meat beater machine, men and yeah. ladies too. I mean, there's probably porn for women on Steam then too, which I can't imagine. Yeah, maybe, they, maybe they have like a, like a, a Bluetooth flashlight you can hook up to your VR console. <laughs> I'm just trying to think how can Sony move more of these fucking headsets? Like, or, or, like can can like a perv? I would imagine if it's just video, you don't need to have a maxed out PC, right? Um, probably if you're just, like, not experiencing, as much. Like, VR porn, which is why I was wondering, like, are they are they? possibly going to move some of these units just based on the ability to jack <laughs> jack in to the uh the porn world 
for people, consumers, because it's a pretty cheap headset. They just they just cut the yeah, price. I, it's a weird angle, man. I I'm just it, bringing it up because like I thought about it. Why not? Like. I bet you yeah, this I, adapter, we see a big increase in the sales of VR units. I mean, they, dude, they they were freaking cheap as shit for a little bit there. They're not I mean, anymore? They're like 350, 350 bucks or whatever. I don't know if they, maybe they still are. I don't know. Yeah, I think they reduced it but, permanently. Uh, LJ and I talked about it. Well, it's, it's on... Like, I'm on the PlayStation Direct website right now because I wanted to see where the, about that dongle and the vr2 is still 550 bucks on playstation direct so you could probably get it cheaper from retailers yeah yeah I but think you can. from direct you're still you're still paying you're still paying full right. full price for it oh interesting let's keep moving forward speaking of porn final fantasy 7 rebirth confirmed uh queen's blood the in-game card game will be returning in the sequel to the trilogy the last game of the trilogy i i don't like these games man these in the only in-game game that i've played that i enjoy in any game is gwent Do you, oh you you didn't play this game though this isn't in the first one no. Oh. Queen's Blood is, it's just, it's the, uh, um, I don't know why my freaking brain is farting. What's the one, but... what's the one where you have like, oh, I'm thinking Horizon with the chess maneuvers and it's like the, the fake game of chess. They yeah. And, and there is, there is like a mini, a mini kind of game as well in Final Fantasy VII Remake called, uh, uh, what's it called? Fort Condor, I think is what it's called. Okay. So, you know, there is a, there is that as well. But, um... Do you like Queen's Blood? Yeah, so... It's fine. A lot of people are really into it, though. I just... I'm not real big on just card games in video games, so... <laughs> If there was a, if there was like a, so if there was like a version of it that I could download on my cell phone and like play it mm -hmm. while I'm taking a dump or something, then maybe I would be interested in it. But I'm running around because I want to freaking play Final Fantasy. Like I don't want to play a card game while I'm in Final Fantasy. So, um, but that's just me personally. I'm just not that into that part of it. Uh, so yeah. I don't know. But well, I guess that's cool that it's going to be in the, the new game. I just hope that it doesn't require a whole lot of me. It's just weird because, I, I, unlike you, I'll give all these in, like meta games a, a try. But the only one that's really gotten me has been Gwent. Yeah. Which turned into its own game, which they've made so much money on. And it's, it's also... Uh, implemented into that PS4 game, Thronebreaker, which is amazing. Thronebreaker, is that not like the, the single-player campaign version of Gwent? Yeah, it's so rad. It's so cool. Yeah. Anyways, hmm. enough. Anyways, Queen's Blood, coming to the third Final Fantasy game, for anyone who's interested. Moving forward, the PS Plus games for August have been announced. And uh, you might already have access to them, listeners, because we are a week behind. Um, Ender Lilies, Quietus of the Nights, we are getting. We also are getting Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. All right, all right, all right. We're also getting Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga, which is a great game. A lot of content for you if you're a Star Wars fan. Jake, what do you think about that offering? I think it's a pretty good, pretty good little month there. I've heard that that, uh, I've heard that that Ender Lilies game is pretty good. People really like Five, Five Nights at Freddy's. It never really appealed to me, but um, Lego Star Wars is also something that's pretty pretty huge. So I don't know. I may play that again, play that at some point, mm -hmm. but. 
Um, yeah, I don't know. Will I ever play any of these games? I'm not really sure, but I would say that all of the games in this list, I believe, are good games. So nothing really to complain about there, even if it's not for you. Yeah, I, I think that my disinterest in Five Nights at Freddy's is strictly and only because I hate the fucking name of it. That's all. Maybe if it was yeah. called like a night at the scary place, I'd be like, "Oh yeah, that's cool." <laughs> Five called, uh, nights at Freddy's. Uh, I hate it. I mean, isn't it like a haunted Chuck E. Cheese or something? That's, that was always the impression I had. I don't know if that's real or not, though. Hmm. Weird. Yeah. 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 I don't know. It's not for me. Well. But then again, I've never played it. Who knows? It might be my favorite game of all time. Could be. But who cares about any of it? Because, Jake, we have another quiz to take real quick. Oh, uh, okay. We do these PlayStation quizzes, and they're fun. Push Square posts them. And uh, we're going to get right into this. I don't know. I don't think we've done this one, so we're just going to jump into it. If this is one we did recently, I don't think it is. But if it is, you you tell me. Question number one. This is 10 questions. Let's see if we can ace this. On what fictional island does Far Cry 6 take place? Yara, Balin, Jamala, or San Esperito? It's definitely not that because the actor's name is... It's uh, it's Yara. Let's go Yara. Correct. Because I played that one. Good job, Jake. Uh, question number two of 10. The first Tomb Raider launched in 1996 on PS1. In what year did Tomb Raider 2 release on PS1? 97... 96, 99, or 98. Is there any way that Tomb Raider 2 came out the same year that Tomb Raider 1 came out? No, but I bet it was 97 because that, that was a pretty common turnaround in that era. It's either 97 or 98. Let's go 97. Correct. Badass. 2 of 10. PS1 rhythm game Bust a Groove was developed by which Japanese studio? Metro, Playism, Cyber Connect 2, or Arc System Works? I have no idea. I think it's Cyber Connect 2. Try it. Nope. It was Metro. I will say that they're giving you the percentage of, of responses, and CyberConnect2 was the second most guessed answer. Mm. And Metro being the least correct answer. so Probably because nobody's heard of Metro or Playism, so they guessed CyberConnect2 or Arc System Works because people know those studios. Yeah. I'll, to be fair, I've never heard of Busted Groove, and I should, probably should have. All right, here we go. Jake, this question's for you. Who is this Persona 4 character? It's a white dude with glasses and blonde hair and a popped collar with an eye on the collar. And it's either Yuseki Kitagawa, Yosuke Hanamura, Kanji Tatsumi, or Akihiko Sanada. It's uh, Kanji Tatsumi. Correct. Good job. I played that one. Yeah. Which PlayStation systems did Mortal Kombat, commonly known as Mortal Kombat 9, release on? PS3 and PSP, PS4 and PS5, PS3 and PS4, PS3 and PS Vita. There was a Mortal Kombat game on Vita, I believe. I think it's the last one. I think it's PS3 and Vita. That's what I'm thinking. Let's go for it. Yeah. Correct. Nice. Good job. Question six of ten. We've only missed one so far, folks. Which character's severed head can sometimes replace Mimir in God of War Ragnarok Valhalla? Oh, I didn't play this. I have no idea. Oh, shit. Neither I didn't even know that, that this is possible. Hercules, Tyr, Helios, or Hermes. I'm going to go Tyr. Yeah, I, your guess is as good as mine, man. I think it's Tyr. Nope, it's Helios. Man. Hmm. Tyr was the second most guessed answer, so we missed two. Which of these animals doesn't appear as an enemy in Assassin's Creed Origins? Crocodiles, 
elephants, sharks, or lions? I'm going to get sharks. Yeah, I'm going sharks, too. Elephants, though, dude. No, dude, it's Elephants aren't going to be an enemy. Dude, what? It says, which of these animals... It doesn't say it's an enemy. Yeah, it It does. appear as an enemy... Do you don't think that there's not some fucking enemy that's riding an elephant in this Egyptian I game? I think they want you to think and remember uh, the Far Cry. And sharks? Sharks are going to be the fucking enemy in the desert? I hear you, but I think it's a trick question. All right, we'll go sharks. That's correct. <laughs> I was going to say, dude, they're in the fucking desert. I mean, there's the River Nile, but there's no sharks in the river. I know, maybe there's dream sequence or something. All right. Ape Wait. Escape 2 was published by Sony in every region apart from North America. Which company published the PS2 game there? Atlas, Ubisoft, Activision, or Namco? I don't know. I didn't play Ape Escape. I mean, Ubisoft, probably Activision on it. I don't know. It wasn't Atlas, I doubt. Namco's a weird one. I bet you it's Activision. Which is the most broad-reaching of those? Probably, Probably, I mean, Activision's the largest of those, but back in the 90s, it probably... Could have been Atlas, dude. Could have been... I mean, it could have been any of those. Or Ape Escape 2 might not have been the 90s. That might have been the early 2000s. But I, either way, I mean, Activision really didn't get, like, Im- like immensely huge until Call of Duty became super big. So um, it could really be any of those. Ubisoft was probably bigger than Activision at the time. I'm going to go Ubi. Correct. Yes. Nice. What are, question 9 of 10, what are special cinematic moves called in Yakuza, like a dragon games? Are they called killing blows, heat actions, limit breaks, or hyper attacks? It's not limit breaks because that's Final Fantasy. Other than that, I have no input. (laughs) Hyper attack doesn't sound right. Heat actions kind of feels good. Like a dragon. Heat action. Heat action, I think. Yeah, it might be. It might be. I'm going for it. Yes, okay. heat action is correct. Nice. All right, here we go. Question 10 of 10 for a total of 8 out of 10 correct if we get this right. No Final Fantasy game has sold more copies than Final Fantasy 14, but which single-player Final Fantasy game is second on the series' best-selling list as of 2024? 10? I mean, this one should be obvious. 7, but... 15, or 9? Seven. I mean, I mean, it's got to be seven. I'm going seven, dude. Correct. Eight out of ten. We are a PlayStation encyclopedia. Jake, we kick so much ass, dude. Now, I would say, like, I would, I could be convinced that, like, 15 is one of those ones where it's like, even though nobody really cared for it that much it could be like one of those games that low-key sold like 10 million copies yeah because it was advertised so heavily and there was all that shit surrounding it so um and there was a way more consoles out there during 15 than by like because 7 was in the ps1 era so i mean that's a long time ago but they also had a pc port and some other stuff and they may or may not be including the remake in this i have no idea but um yeah, I mean, that, that makes sense that seven would be number two. There you go. And lastly, or I guess the best the player. Yeah. Lastly, before we get into new games coming out this week, I wanted to just touch on all of the articles I found about Bungie lately. Um, they announced that a big project has been canceled. Well, I don't know if they announced it, but I think uh, that, that reporter dude schreier whatever his name is said something yeah about this and then uh there are rumors that bungie has oversold what they could do to sony and then on top of this bungie are to lay off 220 workers that are going to be uh 
uh, integrated into Sony. Um, let's, let's look at this news title. Uh, I think maybe I misspoke a little bit. It says here... No, that's about right. It says on Push Square, Bungie will now integrate 155 employees into Sony Interactive Entertainment over the next couple of quarters. And in quotes, it says, SIE has worked tirelessly with, with us to identify roles for as many of our people as possible, enabling us together to save a great deal of talent that would otherwise have been affected by the reduction in force. Um, so they laid off 220 workers, and 155 are staying with Sony. They're trying to get them to stay with Sony. In addition mm-hmm. to that, they're... Uh, Herman Holst, who we all know, is uh, very possibly going to be taking over Bungie and kind of uh, taking control of operations over there. Um, Former employees are asking Pete Parsons, the current dude, to just fucking leave. So yeah, it's it's a mess at Bungie right now. And uh, Sony, for those who don't remember, we we acquired Bungie. We we bought them for three point six billion dollars. Um, which is crazy. So there's been a lot of news regarding regarding this, and uh, it's it's just weird. I think. What what do you make of all this? Like, was this a bad idea? Apparently, now looking looking backwards, like for Sony to have bought in Bungie, like had they not, what would have what would have happened with Bungie? I don't know. Um. Yeah, you would think. You would think that, at this point. Pete Parsons would just step down. I really don't understand why he hasn't, given how terribly the studio has done over the past, like, since Sony acquired them, pretty much. And uh, for whatever reason, he's not. And I know there was, like, some... There was a bunch of, like, optical shit with, like, him buying cars for millions of dollars and, like, all this other crap. But it's, like... To be honest, like none of that stuff really matters. What what matters is that he's been leading this company into the ground, basically, yeah. in one capacity or another. Whether it's I don't think it's probably not all his fault, but he's at the head of the ship. He's gotta be the one to take the axe if the axe is coming. And for whatever reason, he just like Well they're alleging too completely- that like completely sorry, I mean interrupt, but they're they're alleging that Pete is also has been withholding bonuses owed to people. You know? Yeah. All kinds of so shitty I, things. I, I mean, it's just it's a story as old as time in America when it comes to capitalism and stuff. I mean, the guys that actually make the decisions that get all these people losing their jobs are never the ones that to pay the price. And I was I was kind of hoping that now that Sony is sort of their owner at this point, that they could step in and be like, "You need to get the fuck out because clearly you're not." working as far as the leadership in this team goes Mm. and yeah i'm sure he would get his golden parachute and he would ride off into the sunset and all this crap but i just i don't know i mean i feel like it's unfortunate because bungie is clearly a very talented studio yeah i would say so yeah, maybe they're a little bit bloated. Yeah, maybe they got on a little bit over their heads. Yeah, maybe they were purchased for too much money, blah, 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 blah. But the point of the matter is that somebody has got to take the reins and write this ship. And it doesn't seem like it's ever going to be Pete Parsons at this point. <laughs> and so I understand why these people that were losing their jobs would turn around in frustration and call for this guy to be fired because he's the one that led them off of the fucking, you know, off the cliff. Yeah. So it sucks. Maybe Bungie needed to be trimmed down because they were pretty big. I think they were like 1400 people or 1200 people or something, which is a lot. Um, but, uh, 
What's curious to me is like they're peeling off. Sony's peeling off some of this team for this other side project, and they're going to make them a a PlayStation Studio. Yeah. And what's interesting about this is that does this mean that because they're pulling them outside of Bungie and putting them in a different studio, that now they can make whatever this game is exclusive? Because if it was part of Bungie, Bungie's whole thing when they got acquired is like, we're not making exclusives, everything's going to be available everywhere, blah, 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 blah. Well, now that they're taking this Bungie project, Mm. ripping it off into a new studio that's under PlayStation Studios now, does that mean that that can be an exclusive piece of content for PlayStation at this point? Which is... Kind of an interesting thing to think about. I would. Think, I don't really care about the exclusivity one way or another, but it's it's interesting to think about. I would think that they they can and uh, maybe not exactly. I mean, whatever whatever has been registered or trademarked, if anything, for this project has been done. Um, they're obviously going to have to come up with like new names for shit and stuff. You know what I mean? But like, I would imagine they can just steal it that way. And it very yeah. well might be their way of getting ahead, getting ahead of this and making making it work out a little better in their favor, Sony, for having uh, been just maybe making a bad purchase. You know what I mean? I mean, it's easy, it's always easy to play Monday morning quarterback with everything. You sure. know, you wake up and it's like Monday, the game's over, and you're like ah, they should have done this or they should have ran the ball and they you know and they passed and they missed it or it was intercepted or. You could oh Sony should have never bought that fucking studio, but in in that in the heat of things, uh, Microsoft were buying up a lot of fucking studios, and Sony was trying to figure out they were they were placing their bets essentially on what they could get with the money they had, and and it maybe was less about what they could get with the money they had, and more so what can we keep Microsoft from getting, right? So. I don't know. It's interesting to think about, but the bottom line is 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 that Sony owns Bungie and Bungie's fucking tanking right now. So um it just seems like it's really really uh disruptive over there. I mean, some of these some of these things on this Push Square article were like really vitriolistic from it says here, it says, uh, former employees feel it's time for the current CEO Pete Parsons to go. And it puts in quotes, you are a liar, a thief, and so many things we can't discuss publicly, alleged an ex-community manager, Leanna Rupert. And then it says, step down and without the giant Sony payout, this isn't on Sony. This is squarely on the failure of leadership, plain and simple, end quote. And then there's another one, Griffin Bennett, who previously worked on Destiny, adds... Um, C-suite taking accountability for any of this or still just withholding bonuses and it'll be settled in-house. Poor leadership has crushed one of the greatest developers of all time, Retire Pete. And then there's another one, uh, Sam Bartley. Uh, Coward, you did this. You chose this. I'm already listed as do not work with and I don't care anymore. You lied to my face, straight to it. You also invited me to come see your new cars two days before you laid me off. Two fucking days. Leave now. <laughs> so Pete Parsons doesn't really this is all alleged, you know, one person saying something against another, but it doesn't really seem like he's in the best <laughs> best graces of uh his former employees who are really fucking I would say out. not. Yeah. Um, so needless to say, I don't know anything that's going on over there. I just know what the news sites are saying. But it it's interesting to think that somebody is uh fucked up a good thing um so so clearly but eh it is what it is man so that being said the turmoil at bungie let's talk about new games coming out this week and today is the 12th so the game that came out today on the PSN is called Shoulders of Giants ultimate on ps5 i don't know i don't think i've ever heard of this game 
Tomorrow, August 13th, Hidden Through Time 2, Discovery on PS5. The 14th, which is Wednesday, Green Hell on PS5. And Sam and Max, The Devil's Playhouse Remastered on PS4. Moving into Thursday of this week, Cricket, Jai's really peculiar game on PS5, PS4. Hunt Showdown 1896 on PS5. I thought the game was already out. PS5. Mm -hmm. Overboss, PS5, PS4, Phantom Spark, PS5, PS4, The Precinct on PS5, and White Day 2, The Flower That Tells Lies on PS5. And Friday of this week, Cast Away on PS5, PS4, House of Golf 2 on PS5, Big One, Madden NFL 25 on PS5 and PS4, Rewind or Die on PS5, PS4, and Sunnyside on PS5. So those are the games coming out this week. And Madden uh, 25 is probably the biggest one. Although I do know that the Hunt Showdown, maybe the 1896 is different. Maybe this is like the sequel or something. Hmm. But yeah. Hunt Showdown looked cool. I never got into it, though. But anything there for you, Jake? No, but I'm curious how well Madden will do with NCAA killing it right now. It's a great question. I, I'm curious if they'll see a down year with Madden because of NCAA. I doubt but it. Other than that, I don't have really anything to say about it too much. I mean, it 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 down meaning like maybe a little bit less sales than normal, but Madden's such a juggernaut, man. Right. So, all right. Well, that's all I got for the show. I hope that everybody has a great week. It is now eight o'clock, and uh, what a freaking day it's been. So, apologies again for not having the episode out last week. We uh, just didn't get it done, and. Uh, here to own it but we are here this week for you and uh we'll be back next week that's the plan um yeah so jake anything for the audience before we take off nope i'm gonna go make myself some dinner yeah and relax and yeah tomorrow's another day yeah well thanks for your time and i'm glad you didn't die in the uh deluge of rain and branches yeah, me too. Dude, if that shit happened to me, I would have just called everyone I knew. But like, you never fucking believed it was happening. I almost died. I'd be so dramatic uh, about it. Yeah, I uh I mean everyone I tell is like, Oh my god, that's crazy and I'm like, Yeah. Um but I don't know. I mean I don't really like being the center of attention, so <laughs> Yeah, I understand that. Uh, all right, dude. Well, have a good night. Have a good night to the listeners. You guys hang in there, and uh, we will catch you next week with another episode of PS This Is Awesome. And this was episode 338. We're getting closer to 350, and which is just crazy. But, um, yeah. You know, I just realized I never even told, like, any of my family about it. So, like, if my brother listens to this show, this will be the first time that's, he's heard of that's it. That's so wild to me. I, I, I would have told everybody I know by now. Anyway, sorry to miss your outro. I, that just occurred to me whenever we, you were talking. Yeah. Well, I hope this is how he gets his news about your life. So, yeah. <laughs> you're just that that recluse. Um, like Undertale until dawn in urban chaos. P.S. Yes. This is awesome. This is awesome.